Welcome to Grammar Lesson 2.1, the present tense of AR verbs. The first thing you need to understand about a verb is that each verb in its most basic form is called the infinitive verb. In English, we put the word to in front of a verb to show the infinitive form. For example, to draw, to sing, to dance, that would be the most infinitive form of a verb because it's not specifying who is drawing or singing or dancing. In Spanish, the infinitive verbs look a little bit different. Instead of putting the word to in front of them, they have an ending, and it can either be AR, ER, or IR. So anytime you see a verb with an AR, ER, or IR at the end, that verb is in the infinitive form. Here are some examples. Estudiar, which means to study, comer, which means to eat, and escribir, which means to write. We're going to look at how to conjugate a verb. Basically, what conjugations mean is that you're going to change the ending of your verb to match your subject. We do this in English. Um, for example, with the verb to dance, we say, I dance, but if my subject is he, then the word becomes he dances. And in Spanish we do this, but it's a little bit more complicated as we have six different forms of the verb. So let's look at the verb estudiar, which means to study. We'll start with the singular forms of the verb. If you remember the subject pronouns from a few lessons ago, yo means I, tu means you when it's someone that I know well on a friendly or familiar basis, and then el is he, ella is she, usted is you in a more formal context, or someone that you don't know as well. Okay, so those are our singular subject pronouns. And what I've done is I've taken the, um, the stem of the word, which is kind of that, the middle piece, or the beginning and middle piece, and I've put it in the middle box. So you can see the stem of the verb estudiar is estudi. The ending is ar, and we're going to change that ending to match each of our subjects. So in the yo form, we change the ar to o, yo estudio. In the tu form, we change the ar to as, tu estudias. In the el, ella, and usted form, we change the ar to a, estudia. Next, let's look at the plural forms. The plural subject pronouns are nosotros for we, vosotros, which is the plural form of tu, and it's only used in Spain. So this is the one that I refer to as the y'all of Spanish because it's not quite as common in other areas. Ellos, ellas, and ustedes are the other plural subject pronouns. As a reminder, ellos is they when we're referring to a group of males or mixed, a mixed group of males and females. A yes is they when the group is exclusively females. And then ustedes is the plural form of you, and this is the more common plural form of you. So this is more like how in English we would say you guys. Okay, let's look at the plural endings for AR verbs. In the nosotros form, we change the AR to amos, estudiamos. In the vosotros form, we change the AR to ais, estudiais. In the ellos, ellas, and ustedes form, we change the AR to an, estudian. Okay, next let's talk about what these six different verb forms actually mean. We're going to take a look at the ver infinitive verb bailar, which means to dance. Okay, the different forms of this verb in the singular, um, the singular forms are yo bailo, Tú bailas, él, ella, o usted baila, okay? And if you look at the meaning of each of these words, when I say yo bailo, that could mean I dance, I do dance, or I am dancing, okay? You don't have a separate word that you have to use for do. Um, there is a separate way you can say I am dancing, but you'll learn about that later. So for now, if you can just remember that each of these different conjugations can mean three different things. So tu bailas can mean you dance, you do dance, or you are dancing, and continue um, with that pattern for all of the different forms, including the plural forms, nosotros bailamos, vosotros bailáis, 
ellos bailan, ellas bailan, and ustedes bailan. If you can remember this pattern, it will help you a lot when we get to um, the lesson where we start to form questions, because when you want to ask, do you dance or are you dancing, it's important to remember that you don't have to put a separate word in for do or are or am or is. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, next we're going to talk about what to do when you're using two verbs in the same sentence or phrase. The rule that you need to remember is that you conjugate the first verb and leave the second verb in the infinitive form. Here are a couple of examples. Yo deseo hablar con el señor Díaz. This is how you would say, I wish to speak with Mr. Díaz. Deseo comes from the verb desear, which means to wish, and hablar come, is the infinitive verb to speak. Here's another example. Ella espera bailar con su novio. She hopes to dance with her boyfriend. Espera is the conjugated form of the verb esperar, which is to wait, to hope, or to expect. And then bailar is the infinitive verb to dance. If you want to show that an action is not happening, the rule is um, to make a sentence negative, all you have to do is put the word no in front of your conjugated verb. And in this case, the word no would mean not. Here are some examples. Ella no habla español. So this is saying she does not speak Spanish. Whereas if I wanted to say she does speak Spanish, I would just say ella habla español. Another example, ustedes no regresan. You guys do not return. If I simply wanted to say you guys do return or you return or you are returning, then I would say ustedes regresan. A lot of times you'll hear native speakers omit the subject pronoun, so they'll say a conjugated verb, but they won't include the, the yo, tu, el, ella, usted, nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas, or ustedes with the uh, verb. And that is perfectly fine if you are an advanced speaker or you've had lots of practice with the Spanish language. However, I have a rule for my um, classes, especially in Spanish 1 when you're first starting out, that I need you to always use the subject pronoun or just your subject in the third person singular and plural forms. If you look at this chart as a guide, if you are talking about yourself, so you're using the yo form, it's okay to drop the subject pronoun. Same with the tu form, the nosotros form, or the vosotros form. And the reason is because these conjugated forms, if I say bailo, that can only mean I dance. Or if I say bailamos, that means we dance. It can't mean um, that you dance or he dances or she dances. The reason I ask you to always include the subject in the third person singular form, which would be el, ella, usted, or the third person plural form, ellos, ellas, ustedes, is because if you don't add the subject and you just say, for example, baila, I don't know if you're saying that he dances, she dances, my mom dances, the little boy dances. So that's why I ask you to use your subject pronouns specifically with third person singular and plural forms at least for now, and then when you get more advanced and more comfortable with the Spanish language, it would be appropriate to drop those as well. Okay, the next question, what do I do when my subject pronoun, my subject is who, what, or which? This can be a little bit tricky, so make sure you include this part in your notes. If your subject is quien, which means who, and it's only one person, you use the el, ella, or usted form. If your subject is quienes, which would be the who when you're talking about more than one person, you would use the ellos, ellas, ustedes form. If you're asking what, and it's, you're referring to one person, place, thing, or idea, then you use the el, ella, usted form. If you're asking which, like which one, person, place, thing, or idea, again, you use the el, ella, usted form. If you're asking which ones, like which books or which girls, which friends, then you use your plural form. So that would be the ellos, ellas, ustedes form. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the personal a. 
The rule with the personal I is that whenever an action is being done toward a person, you have to include a personal I. So this means the action is being done to or at someone. If you remember, the word I by itself means to or at. Okay. An example, nosotros ayudamos a los niños means we help the children. In English, we don't technically say we help at the children or we help to the children, but in Spanish, you do say it that way. Another example, el papá besa a la mamá. The dad kisses the mom. Again, in English, we wouldn't say the dad kisses at the mom or the dad kisses to the mom, but in Spanish, remember, we do use that personal a. So you'll need to make sure you include that. And again, this is whenever you're doing an action or talking about an action that's being done toward a person. Okay, looking at the verb comprar, which means to buy, I want you to try some conjugations on your own. So at this time, you'll need to take out a piece of paper or a whiteboard or whatever you have and write these different forms of the verbs for me. I want you to write, how would you say I buy and then also how you would say, I don't buy. How would you say, you buy when you are familiar, so you're someone I know on a first name basis. And how would you say, you don't buy? How would you say, he buys, he doesn't buy, she buys, she doesn't buy, and etc. I want you to write down all of these conjugated forms of the verb comprar, and then um, I'll come by and check them for you.